As early as 1850, Danish, Japanese, Spanish American, and African American settlers began farming along the Sand Creek area. Amid sparse prairie homesteads, Adams County and Adams County School District 14 were officially formed in 1902. Four years later, the first grammar school was built and in 1908, the district of Adams City, along with nearby Derby and Rose Hill School Districts, combined to form Union District No. 1 for the education of the community's 12 high school students. 100 years after Adams 14 was born, the school district now serves more than 6,500 students with over 900 employees in 11 schools. It continually pursues its mission of making a positive educational difference for all students with innovative, cutting-edge programs and services. This is the centennial story of Adams County School District 14. Imagine the turn of the century. It's 1903 at the dirt intersection of 69th Avenue, Dahlia Street, and Brighton Road. The Adams Land and Improvement Company establishes the City of Adams, consisting of a grocery store, a blacksmith shop, four residences, and a short railroad siding. 1906, the first District 14 Grammar School is built. Eight grades are divided among three of the four rooms. In 1908, 12 high school students begin using the fourth room until 1916 when a new high school is built. The fathers got together and uh, organized a, a, a group school board and, and decided to, to build a high school so the kids could, instead of leaving school at the eighth grade, they'd go to high school. The high school becomes its own school district, Union District 1, and has its own board of education with representatives from each of the three districts. And it was, it, it was a great uh, improvement for the, the community. Just Things just started to happen, although our high school would have seemed rather crude to what we have today, but it, it, it changed the whole life of the community, really. In 1910, Basketball is the first sport played at Union High School. In the 1920s, the automobile and tractor begin to replace horses in the farming community. Soon, oil refineries industrialize the area and the settlement is called Commerce Town. Along with industrialization comes technological innovation and the first telephone is installed in the superintendent's office in 1927. In the midst of the Great Depression, Adams City School District 14 is the first school district in the county to receive Works Progress Administration funds in 1936. The federal funding is used to remodel the local high school, adding more classrooms, a stage, and a gymnasium. I was a gym teacher. I started, well, the school newspaper, and I started the pep club. I did a little bit of everything. The high school was their community. You think of these kids at Adams City, you knew them so well. I, I miss the, the familiarity with all the kids. By 1946, things are changing. Adams City School District 14 becomes Adams County School District 14. Consolidated into the district are Riverdale District 3, Rose Hill District 61, Union High District 1, Derby School District 7, and Irondale District 97. The high school's athletic mascot is named the Eagle, and in 1948, the football field is named after early pioneer Ed Crow. During the 1940s and 50s, Growth is the foremost issue faced by the district. Uh, you could see that the administration was looking into building better schools and bigger schools. And that's when it started to come about. And when they got to, to the point where uh, 
some of the athletics was very su successful at the time. Uh, you could see that they were going to have to get into uh, new gym facilities and stuff like that. So, hence uh, Crow Field. You know, at the time, it was uh, the biggest swimming pool in the state of Colorado. In 1952, Commerce Town is booming. The local population is 1,200 in a tiny three square mile area. Always adapting to the changes in the community, the district built schools in the 1950s like Rose Hill Elementary, Central Elementary, DuPont Elementary, Monaco Elementary, and Kearney and Adams City Middle Schools. And it acquires federal funds to finance planned construction. In 1953, the grade school moves to a new one-story building east of the high school. That same year, a separate building for music and shop classes is opened. By this time, the graduating class has grown to 54 students in a school district that services 55 square miles of rural farming, suburban, and industrial housing areas. Along in the late 50s, we began to experience a lot of growth. And along with the growth came a desire and a need for additional facilities. Our growth uh, went from 200 students in 1951 when I came, and when I left the high school to go over to the administration building, we had 2,000 students and 100 teachers. Two new grade schools are built in 1959, Alsop and Kemp Elementary Schools. When Commerce Town becomes Commerce City in 1960, the population has reached nearly 9,000 people. Cattle raising, carnation growing, and the nation's most beautiful Greyhound racing plant are all in the mix. The 1960s and 70s are times of change even in the small Commerce City community. Growth continues with new additions like Hanson Elementary and renovations being planned for existing schools. If you looked at the enrollment at that time, the school was pretty large. And it was still, at that time, that was not the commons area. The commons area was all a grassy open field between the two buildings. And uh, so you had the, the west building and the east building. And, and to go from one building to the other, you literally had to walk outside. And, uh, it was kind of a, a campus atmosphere and it was a really a big deal for the kids from Adams City Middle School or Junior High and Kearney Junior High going to the high school then. By the early 1970s, Adams County School District 14, now a large suburban school district, has nearly 800 employees in 11 schools and an enrollment of nearly 7,000 students. This district has continually faced the challenges before it, whether it be growth, whether it be uh, the need to build uh, additional facilities, remodel, tear down old buildings and build new ones, expand. The school board opens its first discussions regarding the testing of students and the improvement of the educational programs in the district. While working hard on improving student achievement and keeping kids in school, School District 14 tackles the same issues in the 1980s and 90s facing the entire nation. This little district rises to these challenges by developing the first AIDS education curriculum in the state, integrating special needs students into the classroom, placing child advocates in every school to address psychosocial issues, and creating after-school programs. Student performance did improve during those years and the district became uh, noted during the early 90s as a result of a lot of that work through the 80s and into the 90s as a model district throughout the state. As technology marches on, Adams 14 is first with internet access and computers in every classroom. Not only the traditional forms of education, reading, writing, and arithmetic, but they have also made sure that we stayed up to date with what was going on in the world with the computer world, the television world, uh, the vocational world, and so on. They provided so many different kinds of facilities and opportunities for our students that'll match any district that I know of around here. And one of the first computerized high school programs in Colorado puts Lester Arnold High School on the virtual map. 
We're one of the few uh, school districts in the state and one of the few in the country that has a virtual high school. Uh, so it's, it's really a school of the future where a student can attend high school from their kitchen table in their home via the internet. In the year 2002, the opportunities for Adams County School District 14 are similar to those of the fledgling school district of the 1900s. Growth and quality education remain in the forefront. Teachers, administration, and the Board of Education continually collaborate with parents and community members to enhance the learning environment for all students. The community pride is shown real clearly at graduation time because that is a, that's a community event. That is not just a graduation for 180, 200 students because the stands will be full. There will be people standing in the aisles practically to watch and to be proud of their children. And they're proud of their children because of what the school has been able to help them to achieve. The sky's the limit. <laughs> The opportunities exist, and if they want, want to af go after something in this community, they, in school or whatever, uh, we've got a lot of people here to help them. <laughs> Commerce City has always had a small town feel, and frankly the district has always had a small town feel, where you feel like people know each other and you feel like it's a small town and it's a community. And in that sense, um, I left with that. And, um, um, I, that's still something that remains with me even today. Even though I grew up in the city, uh, in many respects I grew up in a small town. Having a small town feeling is still important to many people, even in the big cities. But they probably wouldn't admit it, but it's good to, to have that old so-called eye-to-eye contact, pat-on-the-shoulder contact. There is a lot of people uh, uh, graduates from Adams 14 that uh, uh, have returned back 14 in, in Commerce City in the community and, and, and they, they play as role models. There's, we, we've got a lot of people that, that live there forever and ever and ever. Okay, And so we've got some long, lifelong residents that are living in there and I think that that comes back and helps the community. I'm one generation, my children were, the, were another. I, and I can give you instances of where you, we have grandparents who attended the school district, then the parents, and then the children, and now the, their children. So th because of that, you have a great sense of ownership about what's going on. This is my place where I live. This is, these are my schools. The other advantage that I think we have here in, in District 14 is the majority of our schools, particularly elementary, are neighborhood schools. The kids walk to school, they play on the playground in the summertime because it's a park-related atmosphere. The Adams 14 School District serves as a, a cornerstone for this community and uh, the boundaries of Commerce City that lie within our school district uh, have, have been the same for a number of years. And, and so if the schools are the community and the community are the schools, then, then we help build that sense of community. Um, we're the place down at the end of the street where you can uh, get into, uh, hold your meeting, uh, get information. Uh, we have a strong partnership with our city here, so that sense of community continues to build, and I think it builds around the school district. They have, a, they have a, a, not only a great deal of affection for the school district and for the school particularly, but they have a great deal of affection for, for me and for teachers that they had at that time, and I think that's uh, that's something that's uh, nice to hang on to. It matters not the year, 1902 or 2002, nor the student population, 12 or 7,000. Adams County School District 14 continues its dedication to a positive education for all students. With a proud 100-year heritage, we have come by foot and horseback, wagon and train, automobile and airplane. Our birth was humble, our lives remarkable, and our future unstoppable.
Hi, I'm Joyce Waldrop, and I work with Foster Wheeler Environmental Corporation at the Rocky Mountain Arsenal. We've had the privilege of working with Adams County School District 14 for a number of years, and we're very proud to be a sponsor of the Centennial Story.